Hey guys, welcome to another Final Cut Pro video. I'm really excited about this one because I'm going to talk all about Color Finale 2 and my seven favorite things about it. Let's do this. Firstly, I want to say thank you to Color Finale for sponsoring this video. If you're not familiar with Color Finale 2, it's a super powerful color grading plugin that has a ton of cool features that you just don't get with Final Cut Pro's built-in color grading tools. They sent me the plugin to try out a few weeks ago and they are also generously giving away three copies of the plugin to three of you guys. So stick around to find out more about the giveaway. Before we get into my favorite features, let me first give you a quick overview of the plugin. When you drop the plugin onto your footage, this is what the interface looks like. In the color management section, you can choose whether your footage is video, in other words, a Rec. 709 color space, log, or the ACES color space. And you can even add an input LUT, which is generally a correction LUT, which is converting log to Rec. 709, and not a creative LUT. You have the correction section where you can adjust the exposure, contrast, white balance and tint, saturation, and sharpness. In the layers section, you can click on edit layers to open up this layers panel. And here you can add color wheels, a curves adjustment, a six vectors adjustment, which allows you to manipulate colors individually and HSL curves adjustments. There are a couple of other features down here at the bottom that I'll go through a bit later in this video, but right at the bottom, you also have a film emulation section where you can add film grain to your footage. There are a bunch of different settings you can change and you can add some really nice looking film grain to your footage really quickly. That is basically what the interface looks like. And as you can see, there's a lot of cool stuff going on with this plugin. So let's talk about my seven favorite features. One of the best features in my opinion is the white balance picker because you can quickly and easily correct your white balance in just two clicks. Using this shot from Amsterdam, I'll add the Color Finale Pro plugin from my effects panel and click on the white balance picker. And you'll want to click on something in the frame that is supposed to be white. If you look at the top of this tram, this is meant to be totally white, but it has a blue tint to it. I'll select that and bam, the white balance has been corrected. I can do a quick grade by adding some contrast here, increasing the exposure and boosting the saturation a bit. And in only a few seconds, I was able to transform this shot into this. I spend a lot of time in the layers panel because it's super powerful and there's a lot you can do there. Using this shot from Berlin as an example, I can head over to the layers section by clicking here and I can quickly add color wheels, color curves and HSL curves adjustments by clicking on these icons up here. I can also change the order of these adjustments if I want to. If you've seen my video on my six step color grading process in Final Cut Pro, you'll know that I like to break down the grade into different but specific adjustments. I'm not going to go through all those steps here, so if you want to check that out after this video, I'll leave a link in the description down below for you. But Color Finale makes grading in a step-by-step -step way so much easier. Let's start with this color wheels adjustment to set the black and white values. To do that, I'll select this color picker over here for the highlights and select an area that should be totally white, like these lights. Doing that will change the brightness, but also the hue of the highlights. I'll do the same for the black areas. Now that my black and white values are set, I'll use my white balance picker to set the white balance, just like that. And then I'll go over to my curves adjustment and I'll boost the shadows a tiny bit over here. And I'll boost the highlights here too, to increase the contrast slightly. On my HSL curves adjustment, I'll come over to my hue versus saturation section, select the color picker and select this yellow orange color of the Brandenburg gate. And I'll boost the saturation to make it pop. I like staying organized and I've always wanted to be able to rename color adjustments in Final Cut Pro so that I can keep track of the changes I'm making, especially if I'm doing a pretty complex color grade with a lot of adjustments. And you can't do that in Final Cut Pro with their built-in adjustments, but with Color Finale, you can. I'll use the same layers from this shot and you can simply hit the return key and give the layer a name. I'll call this one black and white correction, this one contrast, and I'll call this one building saturation. I can select these two layers and create a folder, which I'll call primary. So that folder has all my primary corrections. And then let's add another curve here and create a fade in the shadows. I'll select these two layers and create another folder, which I'll call creative. Now I can easily turn all of my creative adjustments off or back on at the same time. I love being able to do this. With Color Finale, you have a bunch of masking options that you just don't have with Final Cut Pro's built-in tools. 
but by far my favorite masking feature is the ability to track masks. Let's use the shot of Donna in Bruges because I want to brighten her up a little bit so that she can stand out from the background a bit more. I've already done my primary grade, so I'll add a color wheels adjustment here and I'll add a mask. You can add a mask by using these tools on the side over here or by clicking on this little plus icon. I'll add a bezier path and I'll draw a shape around Donna. It doesn't need to be a perfect mask. I'll feather it and then I'll click on the mask again to go back to the color wheel adjustment itself and I'll brighten Donna up a little bit just like that. This is before and this is after. I'll go back into my mask options, select the mask and in this tracking section over here I can click on track forwards. It'll take a few seconds or so depending on how long the shot is and you can see the progress here in this viewer window. I'll scrub over the clip here so you can see how it tracks. If I play that back alongside the before shot, look at how well it tracks. Being able to create sync groups is a simple feature, but it's a huge time saver. And if you enjoy things that improve your workflow, you're going to love this. Let's assume you have a bunch of clips in your timeline that all need the exact same grade, like these talking head shots of me. What I often do is copy and paste attributes from one clip to another to copy the grade. But if I decide to change anything, I need to remove the effects and recopy and paste them again. Using Color Finale's sync group feature, I can simply add a new group, let's call it main grade, and then I can copy and paste the Color Finale plugin to the rest of my clips using Command C and Command Shift V. I'll head over to my layers panel and let's just drop the saturation all the way down for this example. Now, if I scrub through all these clips, you can see how that one change has updated across the entire sync group. It's a super handy feature and I love it. You can also apply LUTs to your footage in the Layers panel, but first, let's add the LUTs into Color Finale. You can do that by clicking on this gear icon over here, selecting Preferences, and then adding the different folders that you have using the plus icon over here. If you head back over to your Layers panel and click on the LUT icon, you can scroll through all the previews of the different LUTs you have. This feature made it onto this list because of how great this preview of the different LUTs is. Simply select one and hit Insert. For the last feature, I want to talk about the color chart. Now, I don't have a physical color checker color chart, but this feature makes me want to get one. Xrite makes a color checker color chart, which helps you to achieve accurate colors when you're grading. I grabbed this clip from Xrite's YouTube channel so that I could show you how it works. I'll scroll down to the color chart section and select the color checker passport video. And then I'll create these four dots to overlay the color chart on this clip. I'll zoom in and adjust these points here so that the colors line up. I'll zoom back out and click on this enable match button and Color Finale corrects the colors to match the chart. That is just incredible. I'd love to get my hands on the Color Checker Passport video color chart so that I can play around with this some more. To summarize all of this, I love using Color Finale to color grade in Final Cut Pro because it's a game changer when it comes to the speed at which you can grade, the accuracy at which you can make adjustments, and it speeds up your color grading workflow. Now the most exciting part, how do you enter the giveaway? First, make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on new videos and future giveaways. Then follow the link in the description down below and follow the instructions. This giveaway is open for two weeks from when this video was posted. So if you missed out on this one or you can't wait to see if you're the winner and you need the plugin, there is another link in the description for you to go and purchase it. And if you use the coupon code BRAD20 at checkout, you'll get 20% off your purchase. That's all for this one, guys. Good luck with the giveaway and I'll catch you in the next one.